Hey, it's Christopher, AKA the Bronze Age Nerd. Welcome to the Bronze Cave. Today, I wanna to talk to you about how I approach investing in different comic books. The first thing that I wanna discuss is kind of the overarching question. Are comic books a good investment? And the answer to this is definitely, it depends. Not all comic books are created equal. There are hundreds of thousands, millions of comic books out there, uh, different issue numbers to consider and many of them aren't very profitable. And of course, you know, you can look at certain books and say, oh, you know, uh, Hulk 181, Amazing Fantasy 15, Action Comics number one, those are clearly profitable books and good investments, right? Well, it really depends because a lot of the realized potential gains there have already been found, of course, because those are established keys. Conversely, most of your Valiant titles or Image number ones or whatever you want to talk about from the 90s aren't necessarily good investments. Although there definitely are exceptions to those rules. For every Cyberforce number one, there's a Spawn number one. Even though it was heavily printed, it still is worth quite a bit of money or quite a bit, relatively speaking. And that's the point that I really want to make. If you're talking about investing in somebody who, to somebody who's in a different world, like the stock world, cryptocurrency, any of those sorts of things, these are collectibles. And generally speaking, my advice is that collectibles aren't great investments necessarily. There are exceptions. If you are able to kind of call your shot, then I think that there's a really good chance that you have some good long-term investments. But that's kind of the key. There's different types of investment. There's short-term investment, mid-term investment, and long-term investment. So We've established that you can make some money on books depending on how long you hold them and which comic book they are. Let's break that up into some categories. The first category I'm gonna talk about is short-term investment. And generally, even though it's not technically true because there's different ways you can flip comic books, this is what I think of when I think of flippers. You're buying a comic book because you know it's going to be hot in the very near future and you, you wanna sell it. So I think of this in kind of two different ways. One way is you know a book is about to heat up because you have some kind of inside knowledge or you have some kind of insight into what's going on in the MCU or the industry as a whole, a TV show in production, um, and you you get in on the ground floor of a book before it becomes hot. The other way that I look at short-term investment is an FOC book that is going to have a key piece of data in it. It's gonna become a key comic book. For example, a first appearance. Honestly, I've been doing the short-term FOC investment thing for a couple of years now. I generally don't think it's really worth it, um, at least not the way that I've done it. I've made some mistakes in that area. There is this tendency to sort of go after everything that looks like it's going to be a key or every hot cover, and that doesn't really pay off if you if you buy too many lottery tickets. There's no way that you can recover from the one that hits. And I think that the real key to that type of investing, for me at least, is to kind of call your shot, to really be sure about the book. And I've had some hard lessons on this. Uh, there was the Frizen Sandman um, number one cover that came out recently that was a one in 100, I think. Uh, I had a chance to pick up that book a couple times and for a good, you know, good deal on the pre-orders. And I, I said no, <laughs> and I, and that book tripled in value at one point, and you could have made a pretty good amount of money on it. But I also have hit on plenty of good books, you know, the Thor, the the God of Hammers, um, Milner kind of stuff. Um, you know, pr pretty much every key that's come out the last couple of years, I've had a piece of the. Black Panther 3, just all that kind of stuff. I've done pretty well with a lot of the Star Wars books, all, the, all those kinds of things. So they've hit, but none of them have really been huge booms for me. You know, probably the single biggest book that I had some success on was the the Sozo Mika uh, Catwoman 39 cover, the one in 25, I think it was, or is it one in 50? I can't even remember now. Uh, but I sold that for a pretty good profit, and then I still have a copy for my personal collection. So that's probably one of the better books, but again, it's pretty hit or miss if you if you spread around the love too much, which is why my recommendation, if you want it, would be to, if you're following the FOC news, really think about it. Like, does this character sound like somebody who is gonna be influential to the story? And you often don't get a lot to go off of because every previews synopsis that like say Marvel puts out, those are written to sell comic books. You know, it's the most amazing thing ever. It's a huge thing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to kind of be careful to read through the hype. Um, and I think that if you if you pay close enough attention, you can you can suss out some really good ones. And the other thing here is like, you know, say hunting in an LCS, antique stores, any place you might hunt, and you see a book that, you know, like you know a show is kind of in early production for and it's priced at a price to move kind of thing. 
and you scoop it up and you hold on to it for that few months it's going to take for it to come out and for the show to come out or get announced or whatever and you flip it so that's kind of the other way and that's to me a preferable way to invest in books that's just what i prefer um, so I'm curious, what are some of your short-term investment strategies? Let me know in the comments down below. So speaking of protecting investments, I want to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, and that's Comic Barricade. Comic Barricades are an awesome solution to a problem I bet you might have had before where your comic books lean or fall over inside your short boxes, your long boxes, and these can help solve that problem by creating a barricade inside your comic book boxes that'll also help strengthen the rigidity of a stack of comic book boxes. This patented design is made here in the United States and ships for free if you go to comicbarricade.com to order a set. Don't forget to use the code BRONZE10 to save 10%. When you order a set of comic barricades to put in your comic book boxes, you'll help protect your comic books from those creases, dings, spine ticks, and all that falling over and that leaning that can happen that can damage your comic books over time. Remember with comic barricades, it's as easy as insert, support, and stabilize. So the, the second type of investment is this midterm investment. And to me, this is the... Um, the type of investment where like, say a few years ago, you knew the She-Hulk show was coming out. So you watched prices, you bought the dips on various times that, you know, say a Savage She-Hulk number one or, or any other key you want to look at for that show. And you timed it right. You bought the book and you're holding on to it and you're like selling it probably now. Right. I know I did that for a few books for Savage She-Hulk, uh, number one, Sensational She-Hulk number one, uh, first Titania, stuff like that. And if you're on top of your news uh, and you pay attention, this can be really lucrative. Now, the trick here is not to buy when the news first gets announced because there's a mad rat, mad rush to eBay. Think about characters that have sort of been soft announced, right? Like we know Nova's coming to the MCU. That would be a great character to invest in because we know it's happening. In fact, Kevin Feige so went so far as to insinuate that not only are we getting Richard Ryder, but we're probably going to get Sam Alexander as well. So boom, there's a couple different books to go after right there. Um, not that I'm really encouraging anybody to do this, but if you are looking for an investment, I think this is where you can make kind of your bread and butter uh, in a very realistic sense and not have to hold on to a non-liquid asset for too long. Now with these, do be careful. I would stick to kind of more mainstream MCU characters and not get caught up in the DC stuff. It hasn't been proven to really kind of make you money yet, uh, in my opinion at least, and I think that it's better to stick to the MCU. However, please don't think that this is completely risk um, proof or something like that. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I don't think collectibles are necessarily a great investment unless you really know what you're doing, uh, and that's true of comic books as well. And the reason why is because Think about some of these projects that didn't do too well. Like Moon Knight wasn't a massive success with fans. I personally really enjoyed it, but a lot of fans didn't love it. Looks like She-Hulk is kind of getting some side eye. Um, there's a lot of a lot of these, you know, movies that have come out. Uh, you know, Eternals. There's there's been several examples from the MCU recently where people haven't really latched on to the property, and we've shown that the MCU isn't flop proof, or uh, at least not with fans, right? So that's something that I would be advised of. But that does bring us to the third type of investment strategy that I look at when it comes to comic books, and that's a long-term investment, stuff that you're holding for five or plus more years. When you are holding a book for this long, you really have to be careful. You have to be cautious. I mean, people that were buying up copies of X-Men number one a few years ago fall into this category because we're not likely to get mutants into the MCU anytime soon. Um, plus, those are essentially blue chip keys, which is not a term that I'm a huge fan of. Uh, at least if you're if you're going to use the term blue chip key, be aware that what the blue chip keys are do change over time. I also think this is where you can slot in some of the classic covers, uh, you know, even like Hulk 340, that kind of thing. You could slot that into this position as well. Uh, maybe Wolverine number one from the limited series, those sorts of things where you can say that like these are these are classic covers. However, uh, you know, they're, they're just going to be something that people are going to care about as time goes on. They're going to want to go back to those classic Neil Adams covers or, or who, you know, insert your favorite artist there, right? Uh, and it's something that I think you can definitely kind of look at that way. Another thing that I would look at with, with this type of investment is the characters. For me, I actually think like a really good long-term investment could be somebody like Deadpool or Harley Quinn, it's kind of these younger characters. Yes, those books are already expensive, or you could even throw miles into this to a certain extent. But if the books are this expensive now, I don't think 10 or 20 years from now, or 30 or 40 years from now, you're going to see those books drop. I think they're more likely to keep appreciating in value. And then you take that to even newer characters, right? Like X-23, uh, Laura Kinney. Um, you take some of those kind of newer types of properties and characters, but be careful. 
if you get away from really tried and true stuff, let's say you go for Walking Dead. Walking Dead number one, I don't think 30 years from now that book is going to be wildly worth more than it is now. It's kind of crazy to think about because it is low print. But unless they revamp Walking Dead in some way in that time frame for people to really get you know excited about it, then it's already done. You know, we've had multiple seasons of the show already, multiple spin-offs of that show. What else are we gonna get out of it? But that doesn't mean that I'm saying that Walking Dead number one is gonna go down. I'm just saying, like, I don't see where the next jump up on the graph is gonna be for Walking Dead number one, other than kind of a slow, steady crawl. And slow, steady crawl is okay, but my point is for for the kind of money you'd be talking about with a character or I don't know, a series like that, I'd rather have Invincible number one, which is still has some some room to grow. I'd rather have any of the Marvel Silver Age keys, for example, would be much better. Even in low grade, I'd be okay with that. So the last consideration I'll make, you know, not just talking about the short term, midterm, and long term strategies, but but the actual payoff strategies is there are ways to make more money, generally speaking. Let's say, you know, you let's say you had that slow and steady growth for a book and you're really excited about it. Chances are there are other investment opportunities that would pay more dividends. The stock market, generally speaking, historically speaking, are gonna be a better investment if you invest wisely. Also consider future burdens. So if you have comic books and you pass them down, let's say you pass away, you pass them down to your family members, they may not wanna deal with those collectibles. This is where I actually think grading serves a really good purpose because a graded collectible is gonna be much easier to price and so that your family doesn't get ripped off if they go to sell it uh, to try to make some money to cover funeral expenses or to cover their bills or whatever it might be. But I definitely think you have to be careful when it comes to viewing comic books as an investment. I do it. I, I do it because it's something I love. And so it's easy for me to be knowledgeable about what's going on um, because I pay a lot of attention to that anyway. And I kind of utilize all these different investment strategies, short, midterm, and long-term uh, appropriately, or I try to, but I also am not afraid to kind of pivot and modify my investment strategy for those books as well. All right, we've gotten to the point in the video where I'd love to hear about how you invest in comic books and whether or not you think it's a good idea. Let me know in the comments down below. If you thought this video was interesting or thought provoking, I'd appreciate it if you shared it within the comic book community because that is a great way to get more people involved in this conversation. Don't forget to check out the description down below for some ways to save money on different things like comic book pressing, comic book supplies, you name it, it's down there. And you can also find links to all my social media as well. Thanks for all of my channel members who help support me. I appreciate that. Their names are up on the screen right now. I really appreciate all the support you guys give me every month. And I also do free comic book giveaways for channel members every month as well. Thanks for watching another video. And I want to remind you, as always, hey, 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 hey. Read comics every day.